3,000. Francine Nian Saba gets the win in Paris, 819, which is number five all time. She's actually higher now on the all time list, Gordon, in the women's 3,000 than she was in the women's 800. And this was an interesting race with about a mile to go. She gaps the field and she holds about a 10, 15 meter lead for a couple laps. Then it then shrinks to five. She also, she then finally with a 150 to go, Edge Gayute gets right up on her shoulder and looks like she's going to go past her. And then Nian Saba was probably thinking to herself, I'm an 800 meter runner. I have silver medals and I'm really fast and kicked away. But I just thought, well, number one, 819 is a, an incredible time for someone who's an 800 meter runner first. But I, the way she's running these races is pretty interesting too. She's trying to turn the screws on people and run as much of the kick out of them. But if need be, she still has that, she still has that kick. So this World Athletics thing is saying it's the sixth fastest time in history. I thought it was, oh, sixth fastest time. Yeah, so I think she's fifth fastest performer in history. Regardless, talk about range. Francine and Saba, you got to mention her now. So obviously we know she was disqualified in the 5K at the Olympic Games. She was in the 10K, but clearly 10K is even yeah. more meters that she's not really prepared for. But in, in, a, in a world where Nian Saba wasn't DQ'd, do you think there's any percent chance that she could have defeated Safan Hassan? Not Safan Hassan, but she could have meddled. I think we have a pretty clear pattern here as I mean, she was really good, what, fifth in the 10K? And she's, yeah. we've, seen now the, we've seen now the 3K in two miles since the Olympics, and she's been good in both of those. We obviously know how good she is in the third. It seems to be that the longer the distance, the more of a challenge it is for her, which is to be expected because she's an 800 runner. So I think she would have been better at the five than she was in the 10. And then you have to look at the competition in the five, and you'd say, okay, well, no, Safan was was untouchable. But could she have gotten in there against Obiri and Sagai? Potentially. Potentially. Now, maybe that field's a little bit deeper and a little bit tougher than the 10,000, but I just see what she does in the 3,000 and the two mile, and I can't help but think 12 and a half fewer laps, she probably would have been in business. There. I mean, that was a quick race, but nothing she couldn't hang with if she's an 819 3K runner. I mean, her PB is one second less than, it's like a half second slower than Safan Hassan's. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. Yeah. It's 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 hard to say that Hassan would have lost because of how great Hassan yeah, was right. in the five and the ten. But I don't think it's out of the question that if Hassan had a bad day, Nian Saba could have came away, stole the victory. And I do think that if she continues on this trajectory, she's super new to these events, these three Ks, five Ks, and ten Ks that she is going to become a problem for Safana Hassan in 2022. I think she's going to be a problem for her for the next three global championships. And I think she's going to win a global medal in a 3K or 5K in the next three years, whether it's 3K indoors, global championship, or 5K. I think she's going to win at least one gold in the next three years. I mean, eight nineteen in nine flat. Well, yeah, because you know, on a Monday morning, Gordon's throwing out world indoor titles. Man, this is too much. Hey, you can put this on the rundown. You got to prepare me for this stuff, man. You can't just be throwing world indoor stuff at me. You're the I'm one who saying. says there's no indoor Olympics. You there is start throwing world indoor. Stuff. I, it's there are no indoor Olympics, but there are indoor global oh, world championships. Uh, I, I that's what I'm saying. I'm just thinking that. Like looking at this, these marks where she runs 819, 3K, and 9 flat, 2 mile, and then her 5K PB is 1454. Like clearly she can run like 1420 based off of her 3K and 2 mile, in my opinion. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say right now, I think she's going to win a global championship in the next three years. Do you th would, you, would you take that bet against me? That would be silly for me to bet against you right now, which is why I'll do it. I will go on the other side of that. I, 
there's well hold on we're so we're actually counting indoors that wasn't just a joke yes we're actually counting no we're oh, counting okay indoors. well then no no th- then i would not then i won't bet against you because listen 3k is her best shot and 3k also is an event in a world indoor championships a championship where we have no idea who's going to show up so no i will not bet against you now you're saying outdoors where the options are five ten or or steeple, steeple. i think she should go for the steeple. I think she should start steepling. Personally, start steepling. She, I think she, could, I think she could dominate some steeple. She's got eight. She's eight nineteen with no barriers. What can she do with a couple barriers out there? Chepkovich is not the same runner, right? And Geruto and and Frerichs went went sub nine, which is great, but top end speed there. She's a one fifty five eight hundred meter runner. I think ste- steeple's the way to go. No, five and five and ten. I think it's just gonna be tough because I don't see Hassan going anywhere, and then there's just this new group. There's just all constantly feels like going to be somebody who's capable of running 14, 14, 20 low, um, 29 low, I think is going to become the new norm. But you have that, that ace in the hole there with the world indoor factor. So you almost tricked me into that bed, Gordon, but uh, I snuffed it out. Yeah, exactly. Not-